Welcome back to Homesteading with the Zimmermans, where we work hard and play hard on our little corner of land in Iowa. My husband and I were born and raised Old Order Mennonite, or Horse and Buggy Mennonite, as some refer to them as. And although we are no longer part of that culture or community, we are intentional about passing on the old-fashioned skills of our childhood to the next generation. Hello friends, Ruth Ann Zimmerman here with Homesteading with the Zimmermans and it's been a busy beginning of the week. In case you haven't watched, we released a midweek video um, because Brenda, our Jersey cow, had a calf. So I stuck together some footage of that for you and I'll post the link so you can watch all the, so you can stay updated on the calf and all of that. Also, um, some of you had said that your children watch our animal YouTube videos over and over. So I'm going to make a playlist of all the animal videos for your children so that they'll just play back to back for them. Um, but regardless how busy we are, the family still has to eat. Regardless how many trips to the barn I'm making, the family still has to eat supper. And one of the meals that has evolved into being a quick meal for us is pizza. And I am going to share a quick way to make pizza crusts so that you don't have to decide you can't have pizza because you didn't start it half an hour ago. Um, so one of my go-to's is barbecue beef pizza and I'm going to use this beef, this canned beef, drain the liquid off of it and add some barbecue sauce and that's going to be one of our protein toppings. I also, thanks Kendrick, I also have a little bit of shredded mozzarella left, probably not Probably not enough for all the pizzas I'm making, but that's okay. One of the pizzas I'm making is gonna be a breakfast pizza, um, and I can put shredded cheddar on top of the breakfast pizza. And um, that is what you see browning back there, is some sausage for the breakfast pizza. So, I'm just gonna get all my toppings ready, and then, because the crust is so simple to make, I'm going to get the toppings ready first, and then show you the simple crust. So before we get too far with today's video, I want to remind you to go to the link in my description. It's the very first link um, and sign up. You can sign up every day to win the Bosch mixer and you can sign up um, to get daily reminders to win the Bosch mixer and there's going to be daily giveaways. Um, there are going to be ebooks and patterns and recipes. There's going to be a winner every day. So if you have any questions, contact Michelle on her blog, which is where you'll go with the link. And this giveaway is running all month. Oh, and it's not only a Bosch mixer, it's also a Bosch dehydrator. So don't forget to go and enter that giveaway. So first I'm gonna brown my sausage and then make a sausage gravy. So into my browned sausage, I'm going to add some flour and I did not drain the fat off, so I'm using the fat um, that was released from browning the sausage. However you would make your sausage gravy. That's how I'm gonna make the sauce for the breakfast pizza. And then I'm gonna add some milk. And then you're just gonna heat that until it's thick. And add salt and pepper to taste. Depends on how seasoned your sausage was. So sausage gravy is really just like a cream of sausage soup um, to me. So you can use my cream of soup recipe 
and just use sausage as your base or you know instead of vegetables and have your sausage gravy and i will link my cream of soup recipes in case you need a little more guidance um, than my freestyle way of making sausage gravy here so i've got my one quart of canned beef cubes and I'm gonna heat that and chop it up real fine. Um, and the reason I'm heating it is because it will release more of its liquid when it is hot and then I'm gonna strain that liquid or that broth from the meat before I add the barbecue sauce and that'll just keep things from getting too sloppy on top of the pizza. So once my beef is hot and chopped up fine, I'm just going to let it sit in the strainer for a couple minutes. So then I'm gonna add some barbecue sauce to my beef. And normally I'd make a homemade barbecue sauce with ketchup and mustard and brown sugar. Um, but because we had a bunch of barbecue sauce left over from our daughter's wedding meal, we're trying to use that up first. And I'm gonna keep a close eye on my sausage gravy so that I don't scorch it. So while I'm getting my toppings ready, I'm going to turn my oven to 425 degrees and I'm going to put some grease into my cast iron pans and I'm using bacon grease to make sure that all of these cast iron pans are properly greased. And then I'm gonna put my greased cast iron pans into my 425 degree oven and preheat them. So while I wait for my pans to preheat, I'm just gonna continue working on preparing my toppings. And this is some farmhouse cheddar cheese that I made a couple months ago using the raw milk from our milk cows. Okay, now you're ready to make the simplest pizza crust you've ever made. Um, all you're going to need is about one cup of sourdough discard per 12 to 15 inch pizza pan. And because I am making three large pizzas, um, I am needing about three cups of discard. So you might be asking, what is sourdough discard? So for me, discard is any time that I feed my starter and I'm either not happy with how fast it grew or I didn't get to it in its active stage or um, yeah, any time that, that I fed it but I'm not going to use it. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to measure 50 grams Okay, so there we've got 50 grams and then I'll feed this. And then the rest of what's in this jar, I am going to put in my discard and put it in the refrigerator. And then that is called sourdough discard because it's not active at the moment. So all the flour in this discard jar has been fermented, which makes it easier to digest. And this I'm gonna put in the refrigerator and use it to make our pizza tonight. We're gonna put this little bonnet on it and put this back on the counter. 
So this is my starter that's gonna grow and become an active starter. So now that I've explained what sourdough discard is, let's continue with making our pizza crust. You're gonna add about one fourth teaspoon of salt per recipe. And I'm gonna sprinkle in a little oregano. And then for each cup of sourdough, you want one fourth a teaspoon of baking soda. And that's gonna get nice and foamy. And then So then you're going to take your preheated pan and you're going to take your foaming sourdough and spread it all over the bottom. and you're gonna put it back in the oven. And then you're gonna do the same with the next one. And we're gonna put that one in the oven. We're gonna keep our oven at 425. Oh, in just the couple minutes that it took me to fill all those pans, we're going to flip this one. And this is actually a step you probably could skip if you needed to. So I flipped that one. I'm going to finish baking it. One of the reasons I like to flip my sourdough pizza crust is because I want the crusty side up because we don't like for our toppings to soak into the crust. So you can see this one's not quite done yet because it's still shiny on the top. So I'm going to let that one bake a little more. So initially the first bake is about three to five minutes. And then the second bake is about the same length of time. After that, I take them out again and add my toppings. So first I'm going to add my tomato sauce. And this tomato sauce was made from the tomatoes that we grew in our garden last year and we use this recipe um, for spaghetti sauce, pasta sauce of any kind, and also for pizza sauce. Next, I'm going to add some mozzarella. Um, this mozzarella was made in our season of abundant milk and I had shredded it and put it in the freezer a couple months ago. And I'm going to add some onions. I like to put my veggies on top of the cheese because if I put the cheese on top of the veggies, the moisture of the cheese tends to make the veggies soggy and my family prefers crisp veggies. And then I'm going to be generous with my barbecue beef because this is the main source of protein in this meal. The beef that we're using was raised right here on the homestead as well. And then I'm just gonna sprinkle some more cheese on top for garnish. And then we're gonna put this one back into the 425 degree oven to get those toppings toasted and melted. And we're going to start fixing another pizza. And sometimes I forget about the soggy vegetables under the cheese and put the cheese on top of the veggies, but the family will eat this pizza anyway. 
So now for the breakfast pizza, which is everyone's favorite, I am going to start by topping the crust with my sausage gravy. And this sausage was also raised right here on the homestead by the family. Next to the sausage gravy, I'm going to add some scrambled eggs. The eggs that I'm using on this pizza are a mix of turkey, chicken, and duck eggs. Whatever we've gathered in the barn the last couple days. And our turkeys and chickens and ducks have all been raised right here on the homestead. And I'm gonna add the last little bit of my chopped onion, and this is completely optional. And then I'm going to top it all off with some shredded cheddar cheese. And then we're gonna put this back into the oven as well until the toppings are heated and melted to our liking. And a barbecue one? It has yep. gravy on it. This has sausage gravy on. Another one? That's both barbecue. Thank you so much for watching the pizza portion of this video. And now for an update on the farm animals. Sunny and her mama Brenda are doing well. Everybody is adjusting and our extra chores have fit back into our routine quite smoothly. On Thursday night, I took a walk out to the pig pasture and found Poppy doing this. And what she's doing is building a nest. And we had given her a dry bale of corn fodder. So I told the family that I think there's going to be piglets by morning.
Okay, I'm gonna give you all an update on my sweet potatoes. So about a week into having them on the window, so I noticed that they had um, started growing roots. So this one has by far the most roots, but they all started showing some root development. And now I think we're three weeks, at, three weeks in, and you can see they've started sprouting. Right there's a sprout. They're just kind of pushing through the skin and there's some more sprouts right there on the edge. You can see little leaves pushing out through the skin. There's one at the top there. And this one's got a beautiful sprout there at the side. And see if I can get my camera to focus. Yeah, there you can see a beautiful sprout right there on the side. This one has one pushing through the skin right there. And I think this one, for all of its efforts in the roots, this one is definitely showing the least amount of sprout activity. But I think those bumps right up there are some leaves trying to burst through the skin. So that is the update on my sweet potatoes.